All right, in this video, we're going to uh, go over how to do a captive portal on Wi-Fi and customize uh, your, your captive portal page. Uh, so we're on a, a FortiGate 201F here, and uh, we're running version 706. Um, and, you know, we're going to show you on the, the FortiGate itself. You can do all this from the centralized Forti Manager as well. Um, but for speed and simplicity for this video, uh, I'm just going to do it right here uh, on the FortiGate. So um, under Wi-Fi and Switch Controller, uh, you have your SSID configuration. And you'll want to create a new SSID and fill all this out. Um, if it's a guest Wi-Fi or something with the captive portal, you'll want to probably do a tunnel type uh, SSID. And so I have one created here already. And uh, we don't need to go through all the bits. Um, I really just want to focus on the captive portal part of it. And um, so if we scroll down, we can see it here. Security mode captive portal. Now you can do captive portal without a password for the Wi-Fi. Uh, or you can do WPA2 with Wi-Fi and then do a uh, captive portal on top of that as well. And then there's some other options. Um, but once you choose captive portal, you then want to choose the portal type. You know, do you want them to have to put in a username password? Do you want a disclaimer and authentication, disclaimer only? Or like an email collection where you just say, hey, put in your, your email here and then, you know, hit go and, and you're on. Um, that's just some data collection you can do if you want. Um, and then, so that's all you need to do by default um, for the captive portal. So let's take a look at what that looks like uh, real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to disconnect my ethernet. You probably won't be able to see it on this screen, um, but the ethernet is disconnected now. And now I am going to click on the guest Wi-Fi. And it should redirect me. There we go. And so this is the page you would get, right? This is your normal captive portal disclaimer uh, page, right? So if I hit yes, I agree, I'd be on online. Right now I'm not online. If I hit decline, I get another page. This page is also customizable. Um, so I'm not going to set it to accept because we're just wanting to show the captive portal. Um, so let me plug back in my Ethernet connection and disconnect from the Wi-Fi. All right, I'm disconnected. Let me close that page. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, modify the captive portal, and we're we're just going to do something simple like. Um, add this CSS file. So this CSS file is, is hosted on a web server, uh, which is also a DNS server um, in my lab. And so you'll see that I'm setting the background color to something awful. Um, so the, it, you know, the new page will look terrible, but it's just to demonstrate that um, you can, in fact, uh, modify these pages and use external style sheets or JavaScript. So, where is that located? Well, you can get to it, and I'll show you here, um, but by going through the um, SSID. Um, but the you can also do it right here in system. Um, and so you, we've got these replacement messages, which are block pages and logon pages and disclaimer pages. And you start out with a simple view, just showing, hey, here's um. Here's the most commonly edited ones, and then you can hit extended, and you get a, a, a ton here, right? And so we could search for the disclaimer page, and we see that here. And then if we double-click or click edit, then we'll see a preview of what we've put into the right pane. So I can put in just totally custom HTML code to include CSS and JavaScript, like you see here. Um, so this is all the CSS, and then we'll get down to the actual HTML. Um, there's a little JavaScript in here as well. Um, so all that CSS can be offloaded to an external file as well as the JavaScript. So what I did <coughs> was 
um, I went to replacement message groups. And so this is where you can, you can create a new set of all these pages. And by default, they'll have the same content as the originals, and then you can modify them, right? So I created this, um, this set here, and you can see that I've modified the disclaimer page. So if I open that up, you'll see now that I have linked to an external style sheet, right? So that's on this web server. <clears throat> and then the, the JavaScript still exists in the file, but that could be external as well if you wanted. Um, the preview is not going to show what it's going to look like because the, uh, the style sheet is external. Um, but we'll, we'll pull it up on the computer and show you. So we'll hit cancel. So that's there. So now how do we tie that into our SSID? So we can come in here and we can edit that SSID. And we, if we go down to the captive portal, we hit customize captive portal or customize portal messages. And then we pick ours here. Well, we could just hit the edit button and then we can come in here and edit it right in line, right? And so this is going to be the same exact, um, here's that style sheet reference, right? Same exact thing, just inline access makes it easy. Um, so, or you could create a whole new set right here um, as well. So we'll just pick the one we edited. Now exempt um, destinations, right? I want to exempt my web server so that the style sheet can be pulled down by the client. Um, and I want to exempt uh, DNS, just in case the reference on that style sheet was an FQDN, I want that to be able to be resolved. Um, now, you have to be careful here, especially on the service. Um, these are exclusive, right? So this means all DNS are exempt. Um, and this means all services to this destination are exempt. Now you can further refine that in your security policy, but as far as the captive portal goes, you know, this is what's um, allowed. All right, so let's hit OK, and then we'll test it out. Uh, so now I'm going to disconnect my Ethernet, and then I am going to connect to the wireless. And here we go, redirected. And so now you can see the background's red. It looks a little different. The image is gone. Um, Right, and so if I hit yes, I agree, then I'm directed to my original requested link, which was msn.com, because that's what Windows does. Um, and you did see in that configuration, you could uh, redirect to a home page or something, right? So let me reconnect back and disconnect from the guest network. And we'll give it just a minute. Okay, so we'll re-log back in. Okay, so you'll see down here um, redirect after captive portal, original request, or specific URL. Um, and then one more thing is if we go to users and devices, we'll see that there's one firewall user, right? So this is that guest access, right? And so if you wanted to test this again, you would want to deauthenticate that user so that you'll get the um, disclaimer page again. Uh, well, that's it. Um, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see anything else. Thanks.